Hi, so the library provides access to a wealth of online content that you can use in your course. Unlike course packs and textbooks, students are already paying for access to these materials with their tuition. You can use links in your course, usually in D2L, but not always, that point students directly to online resources, including articles, databases, and ebooks. For D2L, remember that Quink Links does not work for linking to library resources. It's always better to link out to online content rather than downloading, saving, and re-uploading in your course. For one thing, you want to stay on the safe side of copyright law. Linking out respects the library's licensing contracts with database vendors. Also, every time a student clicks on a library link in your course, it counts as a use for that particular online resource. This is important because libraries partly determine which online resources to continue subscribing to based on usage statistics. Thus, we can make sure we continue to subscribe to the important resources for your classes. When you link to something that's freely available on a website, you can just grab the URL from the top of the page and insert it as a link in your course. This doesn't work with links in our databases because that content is behind our proxy server. You have to log in to access it, so the URL at the top of the page is temporary and might not take the user back to the same page that you're looking at now. You can solve this problem by using the permanent URL instead. Under the Help and Services tab, click on the Persistent Links to Library Content. This page covers how to find permanent URLs and how to make sure that the links you use in your course have the library's proxy prefix. This way students are directed to log in and can get direct access to library content. We'll come back to this page in a minute, but let's look at a couple of easy examples first. In any EBSCO database, in this case Academic Search Premier, you can look for the button that says Permalink. Clicking here gives you a URL that you can copy and paste as a link in your course. Notice that it starts with a string reading stats.lib.pdx.edu. This string routes students through the library's proxy server, which directs them to the login page. Films on Demand is another easy one. On the page for any film, look for the embed slash link button and click on it to see the persistent link you can paste directly into your course. EBSCO and Films on Demand are easy because they automatically add the proxy prefix to the URL for you. Other databases are a little more complicated. Other databases provide stable, but not proxied URLs. This is where the persistent links to library content page comes in. For example, JSTOR provides what they call a stable URL, but as you can see, it's missing our proxy info. Copy that stable URL and paste it into the box on the persistent link page and click on Create Link to create, generate a proxied URL to use as a link in your course. In general, for any URL to library content that doesn't start with stats.lib.pdx.edu, you need to add the proxy prefix. If a database provides a digital object identifier, DOI, but not a persistent link, the process for creating a proxied link is quite similar. As before, use the link builder to build a permanent URL that includes our proxy prefix, then the DOI prefix, then the DOI that you find at the top of the article record. Many times, the DOI prefix will be included in a database, but not always. If it is not, just grab the DOI itself and the link builder will add the correct proxy for you. Both doi.org and dx.doi.org are the proxy strings to look for. You can always check our page on linking to full text to see whether the database you're in has special instructions associated with it. It's not always intuitive to figure out how to use all the different platforms that we provide access to, but for students it's worthwhile to be able to directly access library content rather than searching for it on their own and at no additional cost. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact a librarian for help.